Welcome back to Provisional Survival Concepts. What I wanted to touch on real quick today is a part of uh, EDC that I think is very important and often overlooked because of the cost associated with it. And that's going to be your everyday belt. Uh, there's a lot of belts on the market. There's probably more belts than you can even imagine. Um, but one thing that matters is the quality of the belt that you carry. There's some that like to stick to the um, leather belts and then there's some that like to stick to the more operator tactical uh, instructor uh, type belts that are on the market. Uh, I personally prefer the instructor style belts. Um, the reason why is I just think they're a little more versatile. You can't really um, do a lot. There's not a lot you can do with the leather belt. There's a lot of companies out there that have made a lot of dramatic changes with uh, the instructor style belts. So um, that's the style I'm going to cover today because that's a personal preference and I think that there's a lot more versatility uh, in the instructor style belts. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into the selection of a belt. Uh, obviously the type of clothes you wear, you're not going to wear a one and three quarter inch uh, instructor belt with uh, a pair of um, with a tuxedo style pair of pants, like a pair of slacks. Uh, however, pretty much anything other than that uh, would be not a problem. I know because I wear um, slacks, but I kind of wear the casual style and I wear um, my Wilderness Tactical Belt pretty much every single day since I've had it for the last six years. Um, with that being said, um, you need to look at the style of holsters that you carry. Uh, the type of clips that um, are on your holsters matter uh, obviously not just because of the belt size and width but also the thickness. Um, the thickness of your belt is going to matter because a lot of clips out there are uh, based on tension so if you're wearing a really thick belt and the clip doesn't have the opportunity to grasp the underside of the belt, then it's not going to retain it like it's supposed to. Um, the width matters because obviously if you order your holster and you order one and a, five, uh, one and a half inch belt loop, your 1.75 belt's obviously not going to fit. Um, the thickness of your belt is also going to determine your rigidity. There's a lot of companies out there that will have a layer of the belt material, the nylon, cordura, whatever, then they'll have a stiffener and then they'll have the other uh, layer of the belt material and then they're all sewn together and provides a great deal of rigidity. Um, some people prefer to have a little more comfort associated with it, um, so that's the reason why there's such a large market of belts. Uh, the last thing that matters to those is obviously probably one of the most important factors and that's going to be the cost. A lot of people out there can't afford the $125, $200 custom belts um, which usually is what you run into when you start getting into the expensive leather belts. Um, usually if there's a person's name attached to that belt you're going to be spending a lot of money. However, if shopped appropriately you're going to be able to come across a lot of good quality belts. Um, and then finally, uh, one thing I should have thought about and should have mentioned earlier is going to be the belt loops on your pants. Um, there's a lot of belts out there now with the type of buckle. Some go through those, some don't. Um, and that's going to be the determining factor for me because I don't want to undo an entire belt, feed it through, and then put a new buckle head on it just because that's a style of belt that you know is trendy at the time. So I'm going to go through a couple of uh, really popular belts in the popular uh, buckle styles, explain uh, the features of some of these, and then why there's benefits to them. So, stick with me. Alright, so what we have here uh, is an assortment of belts. The far left is a um, lower cost condor. It's their take on an instructor style belt. Right after that is going to be the Oakley and this is going to have a different style buckle. This is going to have a lot of people call it the Cobra, Oakley calls theirs the Raptor. This is going to be the New Wilderness Instructor Belt that I received. This is actually their money belt. You can see it has an internal feature to hide shit. 
This is going to be the more budget friendly blue alpha gear. And then this is my original instructor belt that you can tell is extremely worn from all the years of wearing it. So I'm going to start with my original instructor belt. So my original instructor belt is a simple feed through style. You run it through, catch it against the lock, and velcro it. I'm ex a big fan of wilderness. And the reason why is their belts are over engineered. And for an EDC, as far as strength and retention goes, that's probably the best thing that you can come across. All right, so this is a standard style instructor buckle. And this would be the position where you would obviously throw a carabiner in because their belt is rated. And in an emergency, you could throw a rope on it and rappel down or secure yourself to something. All right, so this is gonna be their new were instructor belt. This is their money version. I decided to go with this one just because it gives you the option of carrying around and securing some items. So this gives you a place to store your money, a spare key. Uh, if you carry like some of those little pig sticker knives, you can just run one inside of here and have it obviously not for EDC to get quick access to, but it just gives you options to carry things. Went with the FDE tan, dark earth, light brown, sand, whatever the popular color is today, because I obviously have a black one and might as well expand your uh, assortment. So both of these are 1.5s. And the reason why I like the 1.5 is like I said, it gives me the flexibility to wear it in different style pants. And I'm a pant whore. And people laugh because I probably have 50, 60 pairs of pants. So I'd rather buy one belt that fits a lot of pants and save me some money. One of the things I want to cover here in 2017 is the appropriate carry of CCW. Not only just the equipment and gear like you see here, as well as the firearms, but also I want to talk about the mental mindset, as well as the physical capabilities and limitations as to carrying a concealed weapon. I think a lot of people place um, entirely too much emphasis on the fact that they're carrying a weapon and not enough of the mental mindset that there is a lot of things that accompany carrying a firearm. Not only are you there to defend your loved one or your... Um, friends, families, neighbors, spouse, but you also have to be willing in the mindset that you're taking someone else's life. Um, there's a lot of things that need to be covered when talking about this. And like I said, it doesn't just become a firearms or a knife or a defensive situation. Um, your mental mindset needs to be that along with defending your loved ones that you may need to be taking someone else's loved one away from them. The physical limitations that I'm speaking of not only are deployment of the firearm and concealment of the firearm, but also it would also be the physical limitations of you being able to deploy it while under duress, physical confrontations, and the simple fact that you may have to fight in order to get to your firearm, whether it's on your person or off body. I'm not an advocate for off body carry simply because it's just another issue that you have to attend to in order to deploy your firearm. As you can tell, I have a tendency towards Glocks, Smith & Wesson MPs, firearms of those nature. However, you need to be aware of also the physical limitations you have of operating your firearm. Being a firearms instructor for a well-known instruction company, we uh, train CCW by the thousands every year. And one of the issues that I come across with is the failure to manipulate the firearm properly. 
not only to deploy your firearm, but the issues that arrive such as a malfunction or a failure to feeds. Anything that's simple that you could possibly do on a square range becomes 10 times more difficult under duress in a shooting situation. So 2017, I'll be spending a lot of time focusing on CCW. We're gonna cover gear, firearms, proper wear and deployment, as well as a lot of other aspects such as how to get your mindset prop appropriately set for CCW. So with that being said, please stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and I hope that you uh, enjoy the next few videos. Thank you.